The Eye of Horus, Mystical Light of the Soul by Selim Özkan The sun god Ra presided over the ancient Egyptian pantheon and he was the originating deity of mankind. The light of Ra created the essential existence of all things on earth and affected the cycles of life. Therefore the absence of the sun god implied darkness, death and the awakening of evil. The old Egyptians supposed Ra to descend into the sea at dusk and believed he went on his nightly sea travel. In the morning he arose and appeared as a red sun eye on the horizon. Accompanied by his daughter Ma'at, the goddess of world order, he traveled on his sunboat along the firmament and sent his light down to earth. That light was embodied by the golden hawk Horus. The two eyes of Horus represented the heavenly bodies sun and moon. A famous Egyptian myth is about the conflict of Horus and his opponent Seth, god of gloom. In a fight, Seth gouged out an eye of Horus and smashed it into six pieces. Toth, the god of magic and healing, collected the pieces of the eye and coalesced them. He delivered the cured eye to Horus. But instead of using it as his own eye, Horus sacrificed it. He put it as a third eye on the forehead of his father Osiris, the god of the dead, thus arousing a new consciousness in Osiris and brought the light into the darkness of the underworld. From this legend the hieroglyph of the eye of Horus was developed. It became a symbol for all sacrifices and an allegory for light, wholeness and healing. But beside its mythological meaning, the Eye of Horus had also a tangible analogy in ancient Egyptian medicine. There were six forms of perception corresponding to the Horus Eye. Smell corresponded to the right part of the eye, sight to the pupil, thought to the eyebrow, hearing to the left part of the eye, taste corresponded to the spiral and sensation corresponded to the upright part. Additionally, all pieces had an according mathematical fraction. A half, right part of the eye, a quarter, pupil, an eighth, eyebrow, a sixteenth, left part of the eye, a thirty-second, spiral, and a sixty-fourth, upright part. These fractions composed the pieces of an old Egyptian measure of capacity. They were used as a medical means of measuring dosages at the preparation of prescriptions. The Rx symbol one can find on pharmaceutical prescriptions has its origin in the eye of Horus. The pineal gland, our third eye. It is interesting to note that if the pieces added together, the total is 63 sixty-fourths but not 64-64ths, which is in accordance with the unbroken eye of Horus. So a 64th piece is missing. As we find in old hieroglyphic texts, the remaining 164th, the hidden magical piece, Toth used to restore the eye. This piece corresponds with the human sixth sense, the intuition. On a subtle level, the sixth sense is assigned to the sixth chakra, also known as the third eye. In fact, there is a center in the brain which is associated with the psychic experience, the pineal gland. The physical existence of this gland has been known for already 2000 years. Ancient Egyptians knew that in the internal brain resides an organ through which a person has access to the spiritual level of his awareness. For this reason there were particular symbols of fortitude on the headdress of pharaohs. On the mask of Tutankhamun is an erect cobra, an emblem of kingship and light, as well as a link to the Ureo snake, which stood as a third eye on the forehead of the sun god. Today we know that the pineal gland is indeed a form of a third eye, because it has light sensitive cells and acts as a photometer inside the brain. Through the hypothalamus, the distribution center of the brain, the light of eyesight is to be directed to various regions of the brain. 
One part of the light is used to stimulate the pineal gland. The less light the pineal receives, the more actively it produces the sleeping hormone melatonin, which regulates both our wake and sleeping patterns and the length of our nightly dream phases. The Organ of the Soul René Descartes, a 17th century philosopher, held the view that the pineal gland was even the seat of the soul. Similar to Egyptian belief, he thought that this tiny organ was a link between the body and the mental-emotional consciousness. To Descartes' mind, the pineal was the place where the astral body parts with the physical body at the moment of death. Today it is assumed that closely before death the pineal releases another hormone, dimethyltryptamine, DMT. This naturally produced substance of the human body affects the visual cortex of the brain and displays an important role in near-death experience. DMT is also contained in the Amazonian plant Banisteria kaapi. Native medicine men use this shamanic plant, so-called ayahuasca, in their initiation rituals. With the potion from the brew of this plant, in a state of trance, the adept experiences the secret of life and is brought to the gates of the afterlife. In the mysteries of ancient Egyptian religion, the initiate had to undergo a similar experience. It was believed that through death the soul was enabled to fade to a higher world. At the moment of death, the Ba, part of the soul or karma, was released from the body in the shape of a bird and so the soul was taken to the underworld by Anubis, opener of the way to afterlife. At the dead court in the underworld, the soul had the chance to be excused from its sins that the deceased had committed in life. On the so-called scales of truth, the heart of the deceased was weighed against the feather of Maat. If the heart and Maat were in balance, the dead had passed the test. So he was taken by Horus to the throne of Osiris, where he received his judgment. If the judgment was positive, the soul could reunite with the body and was ferried in the sunboat of Ra to the higher world. However, if the heart was bonded to negative karma, if the deceased had acted wrongly in his life, his soul was reborn in a new terrestrial body. Then, according to anthroposophical law, the heart of the preceding incarnation has been transformed to the pineal gland of the subsequent incarnation and being cleansed from all negative karma. Mind your spiritual eye. The pineal gland is the organ of psychic energy in the human awareness. It is a center of perception in the imaginative mind. The visual eye and the pineal are antagonistic organs. The more light gathered by the eye, the less active is the pineal gland. These days we live in a world where the everyday life is mainly dictated by visual stimuli. Through the constant surge of artificial images that stream into our consciousness, our eyes and brain are overcharged to some extent. Beyond that, our body and our environment are polluted by inferior light quality such as from neon light and energy saving lamps. By the impact of these great amounts of light, the functioning of the pineal is compromised and so the strength of our third eye gradually diminishes. Our intuition fades and we need the images outside in order to realign ourselves. But as we can find in all western and eastern esoteric traditions, the high aim is to detach from these images in the outside and to learn to see with the inner eye. The light we see in the outside is only a reflection of the substantiality. The inner nature of the light of our soul is suppressed by everyday images. However, these images have no meaning, as we eventually do not know what is behind them, because that which makes sight possible, namely the sun, cannot be seized with our eyes. So is it really the images that represent life, or is it the light itself? Only when we abandon the everyday images, the essence of our soul will be revealed to the self. That is the moment when eyes start to shine and the light of our own essential nature becomes illuminated. 
To find and preserve this radiance in our eyes is the meaning of life. Thus, the eye itself becomes sun-like and the body becomes a lively source of light.